So tell me if this sounds familiar to you. You have a Microsoft Power BI environment that's been used at a company for a few years and everything started out great and you still do have some absolutely business critical reports in your data environment. But there's also a lot of junk. And unfortunately, here's the thing about those junk reports. They still have some amount of value. People are still using them to extract insights and they're part of their daily workflow. So what's the solution? Well, the obvious one is just to rebuild the junk reports, but the reality is, is that most people don't need more reports in their workflow. They just need better reports. And what makes a better report? Well, a better data model. So my suggestion and my solution when I get put in these scenarios where I have some really bad reports and some really good reports is to try and mash them together into a more effective data model or data models. And the first step in doing that kind of transformation is understanding everything that exists. And that was the problem that I was trying to get it to solve when I was working with Gemini late last night. What I wanted to have it do is I wanted it to go through a workspace, go into every single database, and then go and collect all the columns out of the tables and all the measures out of the semantic models and mash them together into a single file that someone could then take and use to build better data models that fulfill the same need that all of the reports do in that same workspace. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you that Python code that I put together that loops through a workspace, categorizing all of the metadata of the existing semantic models. That way a data modeler can take that data and build better ones. But first, before we review that code, and if you've made it to this point in the video, you might as well give it a like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers. I think we're at 3,954 last I checked, not that I'm counting. So if you're seeing this video, and you haven't subscribed, please do. It would mean a lot. All right, let's jump into Microsoft Fabric. Let's review some Python code that can crawl a workspace, and then let's run it against my own personal messy data workspace. You ready? Well, let's go. Okay, so here we are in my own personal Microsoft Power BI tenant, and it's a little bit of a mess. And I have in my Fabric trial capacity, a bunch of different stuff, including like 20 pipelines apparently. But I have this workbook that I created with the help of AI. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what it's doing. First, I'm importing two Python packages. I'm importing pandas and I'm importing uh, sempy.fabric, right? Which is semantic link. I then have a method here called get workspace metadata and I am calling that method for a given workspace ID. So here's the workspace ID, and then here I am calling that method. And right here is I'm setting a data frame equal to the result of that method, and then I'm displaying the method right here. So what is the method actually doing? Well, if we go all the way up, you can see it's returning a pandas data frame. And the first thing that it's trying to do is it's trying to list all of the workspaces in uh, or all the data sets in a given workspace. It has some error handling here, and then it initializes an array. What it then does is for every single data set <laughs> in the workspace, it grabs the data set ID, the data set name, prints that it's processing it, and then tries it to list out all of the tables and with well, including the columns uh, for every single data set. It does some brief cleaning here. So for example, it sets type and it renames uh, the name of that returned data frame from that fabric function to table name. And then uh, it proceeds on, so like it appends the data right here onto the uh, array right here. And it proceeds on and then it uses the semantic link list measures. In this measures name, uh, it does rename a few columns once again, and it adds a column called table name. And then finally it says, uh, hey, 
let's define the final columns as this small subset. And then let's return that as a consolidated data frame. So what does this look like while it runs? Well, while it runs, it prints processing, processing, and then the air handling says, hey, warning, could not get this data if it runs into any problems. And when you then look at the data frame that it's displaying, right? What you get is you get a singular table with a data set name, a data set ID, the metadata, so either column or measure, the table name that those exist in, the column name if it exists, the type, so like that's the column type if it's coming out of the table, the measure name, right? So it's a measure, and then the measure expression right here. So now that we've collected all of this metadata, how do we get it out into, you know, a program like, don't hold me to this, but like to Excel? Well, you have two options. So the first option is that you can add a lake house and then write it to the file section. The other option is you can write it to this built in section right here. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So let's go up here, get the pandas data frame name, which is metadata.df and we'll scroll on down. And we'll go metadata.df.2 CSV to write it to a CSV. Then we'll put our file path, which in this case, we're going to write to our built in file path. So we'll copy that, paste that right here, and we'll go metadata.csv. And then we'll tell it to ignore the um, index. So we'll go index uh, equals false. And we'll go ahead and we'll run this. And what we should see happen is a CSV over here and ready for us to download. So we can go right here and we can download it. And that will download our CSV. So what does that CSV look like when you open it up? Well, here I am in Excel and here is all of that data. So does this completely solve the problem that we were talking about at the beginning where you need to redesign your data models in order to create better reports? No, but you wanna know what it does allow you to do is it allows you to do that redesign from an informed place because now instead of just guessing or talking to business users about what was in existing reports, you can go ahead and you can categorize it all and then put together this really nice, organized, clean data model. Now, if you're interested in learning more about data modeling, let me know down below in the video comments. And again, if you enjoyed this video, oh, also, sorry, one thing before I go into that, uh, the code that I just showed will be linked on my GitHub for you to download down below in the video description. But again, now jumping back, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and please consider giving it a thumbs up. It means a lot and it really helps the channel grow. All right, with that, I hope you have a good rest of your night or day or morning or whenever you're watching us.